friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today I have a pretty sizable book haul for you, including a ton of pre-orders. Apparently everything came out in June that I wanted to pre-order, so yay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and dive in and I am going to start with my pre-orders. There are 12 of them. Did I realize I had this many pre-orders this month? No, I did not. But here they are. We are going to just start at the top and work our way down. First up, a book that I pre-ordered a copy for myself and a copy for my friend Leanna at Leanna's library so we could buddy read it together is The Viking Chief's Marriage Alliance by Lucy Morris. I saw this title and cover and immediately thought of Liana, not because she's a big romance reader, but because she likes Vikings. And I thought, you know, maybe you won't hate, I mean, maybe she'll hate it. But I was like, maybe you'll like a Viking romance. We could try it and read it together. So I bought her a copy too. Plus, you know, marriage alliance romance, it sounds like fun. Then I have been pre-ordering these beautiful new trade paperback copies of the Bridgerton series, which I want to catch up on before season two comes out. So we have Romancing Mr. Bridgerton by Julia Quinn and To Sir Philip with Love by Julia Quinn. Um, so beautiful. I had been waiting for prettier covers and now that they're coming out, I've I've pre-ordered all of them. So as they as they come out, you will be seeing them in my book hauls. Also, Liana may have uh, pressured me, not pressured me, convinced me that I should also pre-order this beautiful hardcover edition of Shadow and Claw by Jean Wolfe. So I am unhauling my paperback copy that I read for Blades and Bodice Rippers book club. This was when we were split on it where me and Liana loved it and the other two people were not fans. So I... I, I couldn't resist. I mean, look, it's so pretty. Tour Essentials line. It's a lovely hardcover edition. I wanted to have a nice copy of it. I also, pre yes, I did also pre-order the other half of it, which is coming out in August. So expect to see that. My pre-order of the UK edition of Ariadne by Jennifer Saint came out. Ooh, ah, beautiful, right? I couldn't resist. This was so pretty. And I especially just loved the UK edition. This is a book that I read very early, actually. I had an arc of it. And I had an arc and read it like in January, I want to say. I gave it five stars. It really worked for me. It's kind of a more feminist retelling of the story of Ariadne. I thought it was great. Then for a bit of a splurge pre-order that I actually paid for like two or three months ago when they, when they went on pre-sale, uh, I have a novella from Subterranean Press. Subterranean Press does these really gorgeous, fancy, limited edition copies of books. And I got The Return of the Sorceress by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. This is the only physical edition that is going to exist. And I love Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. She's one of my favorite authors. I knew I wanted to have a copy. And I actually had an e-arc of the book. So I've read it. I gave it five stars. And now I own this. And it's really beautiful. It's this like very nice bound edition. And it is signed and numbered. Copy 134 of a thousand. There's only a thousand copies made. So yay. They're so pretty. I Subterranean Press has so many beautiful things. I so far have only bought a couple of novellas because the sticker shock is a lot for me, but I'm, I'm really happy to add this to my collection. I also pre-ordered Real by Kennedy Ryan. Look how beautiful this is. Kennedy Ryan has become definitely a favorite author for me. I love her work. She writes these epic, intense romances that take on big issues and have like big epic love stories. I, I just, I adore them. I have heard nothing but praise for real. I've heard it's really, really amazing. This is about an actress and a director who are working together on making a biopic about a jazz singer. So it's dealing with the history of jazz music, but then also has this modern romance. I also heard Kennedy talk about this book and talked about how careful she was with trying to do as good a job as she could with the power dynamics because of like the potential imbalance there with like the director actress role. But I'm really excited to read this. Everybody I've been seeing reading it has loved it. I'm very happy to have it. Then for one I've already read, even though it just came out, we have Witch Shadow by Susan Dennard. Ah, oh, I love this series so much. I don't know if I've talked 
recently on my channel as much about it, but I love the Witchland series. It's one of my favorite fantasy series. It's like epic YA fantasy, but I feel like it definitely is crossover. The first book reads a little more YA, but later books especially are really read more as crossover to me. It's not like super duper YA and I just this is this is the kind of fantasy I love. I love all of the clues and the way she ties stuff together and I think Witch Shadow might be my favorite book in the series. One of my two favorite books in the series so far. There's one more to go. Um, it was great. <laughs> like I also have a UK hardcover edition pre-order that you will probably see when it arrives in my next book haul so that'll be fun but uh yeah this is great. I love it. You'll hear more about it in my end of month wrap up. Then I have a couple of books that I pre-ordered because they just came out in paperback and I wanted the paperback editions. First is a graphic novel. This is called Jellia by Juni Ba. I originally heard about this actually from Jocelyn over at Yogi with a book. It's a West African fantasy epic graphic novel and it looks great. So I pre-ordered that. Also newly out in paperback is Fires of Vengeance by Evan Winter. This is the sequel to The Rage of Dragons, which I really enjoyed. I do want to continue on with the series, but I wanted a beautiful paperback to match my other paperback. So more epic fantasy. Then for a book that is so far my favorite fantasy of 2021, and if you haven't seen my review video for it, I will link it up above, but this is The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. I loved this so much. I read it like immediately. This has been the month of me like reading my pre-orders right away. Not all of them, but many of them right away or many of the books that I bought. Um, yeah, this is fantastic. It's the first book in a planned trilogy. It is epic fantasy inspired by the history, mythology, and epics of India. It's got morally great characters and rebels and politics and sapphic romance. And I, I loved it. It was it was phenomenal. And my very last pre-order, another book that I have read and really enjoyed, is Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sambury. Lizelle is an author tuber and this is her debut traditionally published YA uh, sci-fi fantasy hybrid. It's really interesting and really cool. It's set in the future in Toronto, so it's got some sci-fi elements to it, but it features a black girl who is part of a witch family, so it's got magical elements to it. Sometimes it almost leans a little bit into horror tropes slightly. It can be read as a standalone. It's a really satisfying arc, although it, it seems it's possible there might be a book two in the series. This was it was really good. It's got a lot of stuff about family and complicated relationships. Loved it. Okay, so those are all of my pre-orders. Next, let's talk about all the books that were sent to me this month for review. And we will start with one that I have already read. I actually read this as an e-arc, but I was kindly sent a finished copy because I was part of the booktube tour for this book. This is The Ivies by Alexa Dunn. I actually had Alexa on my channel, which was really cool. I will link that video up above if you haven't seen it yet. We had a great conversation. I really loved The Ivies and I'm so happy it's doing well. It is quite the page turner. It's a very juicy YA kind of mystery thriller uh, about elite college admissions and it, it, it's great. I gave it five stars. I am kind of friends with Alexa, but also I loved it. Then a book that I'm hoping to read in the next few days is Hard Reboot by Django Wexler. This looks super cool. I was sent this from Tor.com. It's a novella that is sci-fi about like giant fighting ro robots. Like had to change the battery there, but um, yeah, there's like a robot fighting arena, a seedy underworld of old earth politics. I don't know, it sounds really cool, so. Thank you to Tor for that. I will be reading that shortly. Also from Tor, I have The Witness for the Dead by Catherine Addison. This is the brand new companion novel to The Goblin Emperor, which came out a few years ago and I just read it and really enjoyed it quite a lot. So they sent me this beautiful finished copy of this book, so I have not read it yet, but also going on the TBR. As part of a promotion Penguin Teen is doing, I got this box that was lovely with this cool slip covered 
copy of The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman. This was the poem she read for Joe Biden's inauguration, if you don't recall. And uh, this is such like a pretty edition of it. It's a beautiful poem. And we're doing a cool promotion over on Instagram that I participated in. So thank you so much to Penguin Teen for sending this along. It's lovely. Then From Orbit is a book that I've been hearing great things about and I'm really excited to pick up. This is For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. It's a debut fantasy that is apparently a dark fantasy retelling of Red Riding Hood. I'm so excited for it. I like I love a Red Riding Hood retelling. I think it's going to be great. From Harlequin, I have One Week to Claim It All by Adriana Herrera. I read this. I loved it. I gave it five stars. And I had Adriana as well as Vanessa Riley as guests on my podcast, which was really cool to talk about writing diverse historical romance. So check out Chapter 3 Podcast if you're interested. It's linked down below. That was such a great episode. But I loved this. We have a curvy heroine. It's kind of inspired by telenovelas. It's melodramatic. And I just it was great. I, I like Adriana Herrera. And this is maybe my favorite book from her. Maybe my favorite book from her. I loved it. Lastly, an author reached out to me about reviewing her book and so I'm planning on reading this in July. It looks really great. This is Where the Rhythm Takes You by Sarah Das. It's a debut YA contemporary retelling of Persuasion by Jane Austen, which I was kind of hooked, right? Like it's a Jane Austen retelling, <laughs> which I love. But this one is set I think in the Caribbean. Yeah, it's set in Tobago. It's set in author's debut. The cover is gorgeous. It looks fantastic. So thank you so much to the author and to Epic Reads for sending me a copy. I will be reading that one soon. Are you ready for more books? <laughs> Next I have books that I got with store credit at my local indie bookstore. So I sold back a bunch of books that I was unhauling and got store credit with which I purchased three new books. Those are Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. This was actually a used copy, so it was only like $8 or something. But I've heard people talking about this and I'm really, really intrigued. I think it's about a group of horror writers who go to a house to write and then weird, creepy things happen. It's, oh, like it's a haunted house. So the horror authors go to a haunted house to write supposedly as a publicity stunt, but then weird stuff starts happening. It sounds really great. So I got a copy of that. I also got The Book of Coley by M.R. Carey. I've heard really fantastic things about this. I know Jade from Bedtime Bookworm really enjoyed it. Some other people have enjoyed it. And it sounds really intriguing to me. It's a sci-fi novel set in a far distant earth where like, I, th I think Earth? Is it even Earth? I don't even know. But it's, it's somehow sci-fi on a planet where there's like aliens and like plants have taken over and I don't even know. But it sounded really intriguing. And then lastly, I got a copy of Sorrowland by River Solomon, which sounds amazing. I've read things by River Solomon before and their writing is just incredible. This one though is a gothic horror novel about a pregnant woman who flees into the woods and like it sounds wild. So I got that. Then I have some books that I bought with my Amazon affiliate money. So basically, whenever you guys click on the links in my video descriptions and use them to buy books or buy stuff on Amazon, I get like a small percentage of that. And I've started having them send that to me in the form of gift cards that I can then use to buy more books. Uh, so I got one of those and bought some books with it. First up, we have The Gunslinger by Stephen King. I am planning on doing a buddy read of this with Leanna from Leanna's Library. Uh, because I she had gotten me for our TBR swap video to read my very first King and I really enjoyed it and uh, she hasn't read the series. I haven't read the series so we're gonna try it out. Also because it was on sale and because it's really beautiful and I like the world, I decided to grab Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. It's, this is such a weird color. Like, I don't know what to call it. It's like got, it's white kind of, but with this like reddish undertone. It's very strange. But underneath, the book is gorgeous. I have heard like, ooh, ah, uh, beautiful. I love it. But um, I've heard like mixed reviews of this book, but I have all the other books in the series and um, it's so pretty. So I got that. I also very nerdily decided to grab the Jean Wolfe's Book of the New Sun chapter guide. <laughs> by Michael Andre Driussi. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, for Blades and Bodice Rippers Book Club, we read the first half of Book of the New Sun by Jean Wolfe, which like half of us hated and half of us loved. So me and Liana really enjoyed it. I 
love books that have tons of references and like obscure things and this is a guide to all of those things. It's got like chapter references where it like has unpacked what are all of the things he's referencing in the book and so I was like yes I really want this. <laughs> so um, I got that. And then lastly, I picked up Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutanto. I have heard this book is just zany and hilarious. And I know Netflix is adapting it. So I, I wanted to give it a try because I just keep hearing people talk about it and love it. And I, I can go with a good comedic book, especially for the summer. This seems like a great one to pick up. The next category is books I received with gifts or bought with gifts. One of you guys was kind enough to add to my coffee account for my birthday and uh, recommended a book to me which I did actually pick up and I got another one as well. So I was able to get The Dove Keepers by Alice Hoffman. It sounds really interesting. I hadn't actually heard of this before but the premise is is pretty fascinating. So it's based on this actual historical event about 900 Jews who held up for months against armies of Romans on a mountain in the Judean desert where only two women and five children survived. And so based on this, it's a book about women involved in that, but it has like magical elements to it. It sounds really intriguing and came recommended. So I got that. And then I also picked up a copy of Best Served Cold by Joe Abercrombie. Leanna will be thrilled. Um, I am planning on continuing to read in the first law universe and I needed the next book so here it is. My husband and I recently celebrated our 10 year anniversary which is wild like 10 years oh my gosh but he very kindly gave me books off my wish list which I appreciate. First is a book that I've actually read but I kind of wanted to own a physical copy of it and it's just gorgeous. This is The Tangle Root Palace by Marjorie Liu. I had an e-arc of this from NetGalley. It's a collection of fantasy short stories by the author of the monstrous graphic novels might be where you would know her from and I just really enjoyed this a lot. I thought they were fantastic short stories and like the cover art is beautiful so I love it. Then he also gave me The Magic Fish by Trung Li Nguyen. This I've heard great things about. It's a YA graphic novel about a Vietnamese boy who's gay and trying to figure out how to come out to his family um, and I think it has some like fantasy sort of fairy tale elements to the way that it's told so I've heard great things about that. And then lastly is a book that I originally heard about when I was in a live stream for the book Real by Kennedy Ryan. Um, they, they did like a party launch party thing for it and she brought on a bunch of author friends and one was this author who I hadn't heard of before but this book sounded really fascinating. This is Black by Joan Vassar. It's a historical romance about like the Nat Turner rebellion which is really interesting or like originally based on that. So it's dealing with some like heavier issues but apparently it's fantastic. There's like a whole cult following around this book and I hadn't heard of it so. Thank you so much to my husband. Okay, a couple more things. Um, I did purchase a couple of used books at my local indie bookstore and then I have my book of the month box. One thing that I've been thinking about lately is the fact that I read a lot of science fiction and fantasy but I'm not very well versed in the classics of those genres especially by women writers and I feel like you know a lot of times the women writers in genre fiction tend to get kind of lost in history so I'd been like giving this some thought and I was browsing my local indie bookstore which sometimes has like older books. These aren't super old I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you they're from like the 90s but but still even so they're by an author that I hadn't heard of before and these sounded really interesting. The first one I have is Dream Ships by Melissa Scott. Melissa Scott is a queer science fiction and fantasy author. I don't know I think she's still living but I hadn't really heard of her. This came out in 1992 and it's a sci-fi book that sounded right up my alley. It sounds like it's more sort of character driven. It just it just looked really interesting and so I have this like beautiful old hardcover edition of it. And then I also got Point of Hopes by Melissa Scott and her partner Lisa Barnett who I think is no longer living but they wrote a few fantasy books together so it's like medieval fantasy with a light sapphic relationship. Like I think given when this was published it's you know doesn't maybe take things as far as things would today but I think there's like a mystery element to this. I don't know they just looked really interesting so these are books that I would like 
to read because I just feel like I want to be more familiar with some of the women who have written and published and like kind of paved the way for a lot of the authors we're writing today. So those looked cool. They were only like $7.50 each, I think, for hardcovers. So I grabbed those. Lastly, I do have my Book of the Month box. You guys know I'm a fan. I am subscribed to Book of the Month. It's $15 a month, including shipping for a new release or sometimes pre-release hardcover. And you can also do up to two add-on books for $10 each. If you're interested in joining, you can check out the link down below. If you use my link to sign up, I get a free book, which is nice. But uh, this month I did get one add-on. So let me show you what I got. My main pick for the month was Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. And this is actually out a month early for Book of the Month people. This is Laura Sebastian's adult fantasy debut. She's written YA fantasy before, but this is her first adult fantasy and it is a retelling of The Lady of Shalott from the perspective of the heroine. So far the reviews look pretty good. This is one that I already had on my list of things I wanted to read this year, so I decided to get a copy of it from Book of the Month. And then I also got The Other Black Girl by Zakia Delilah Harris. I heard about this from Isabella, the feminist bookworm who loved it. I wouldn't maybe have guessed from the cover, but apparently this is actually horror. I think this might also be a debut, but she loved it and it sounded like the kind of horror I enjoy. So I decided to get a copy when it was available as an add-on. So whew, there you go. <laughs> I forgot a category of books. Oh my gosh. Okay. I forgot a category of books. Um, and I think actually one of these I also bought using the the Amazon affiliate money, but these are books that I read for free and then decided I wanted to own physical copies of. Okay, so we have Fearing the Black Body, The Racial Origins of Fat Phobia by Sabrina Strings. I read this a couple of months back and I've been wanting to own a physical copy on my shelves. I think it's just really fantastic. It's really smart. It traces the history of fat phobia and talks about how a lot of it originates in anti-blackness and racism. Highly recommend. I also read an early copy for review of Ace of Spades by Farida BKE Midi. This was one of my favorite books of the year. I loved it. The cover is gorgeous also, and I wanted to own a copy, so I got that. And then lastly, from my library, I listened to So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijeoma Aluo, and uh, this was fantastic. I read this this month. I decided to buy a physical copy because this is one I want to have on our shelves. I think I'm probably going to give this out to people because I think it's just such a good introductory primer to talking about issues of race and anti-racism that isn't super academic in the way that it talks about it. So um, those are <laughs> all of the books. So uh, talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, tell me about a book that you read for free and then loved so much that you bought a physical copy. So like you got it from your library, you had an eARC on NetGalley, you borrowed it from a friend, whatever the case may be, but you read it, you loved it, and you were like, I need to own it and bought a copy. Tell me what that book was for you in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.